Hey family, my name is Chris. I am your home gamer dad and welcome to the next session of Final Girl. This time we are going to be using the feature film Carnage at the Carnival. Carnage at the Carnival comes with Geppetto as the killer, the Carnival of Blood location, Charlie Final Girl, and the girl that we'll be using today, Asami. Uh, and then also going from forward from here, other than Camp Happy Trails and Hans, each one of the killers and locations in the rest of the feature films all have a different gimmick to them, a little bit something that makes them unique, different rules and things like that. The good thing about this, though, is that they each come with these fun little cheat sheets, frequently asked questions, and just general guides about how each one of the locations or the killer's functions. These are very well laid out, basically going to answer a lot of your questions. There are still some things that are a little bit confusing about how they work and how they go around, but the main uh, rule book uh, does a great job at explaining to that. Plus, you can always go on to the BGG website. I'm sure somebody has asked the question at some point about how like the puppets move or something along that ways. As I mentioned before, my first few sessions are going to be strictly taking Killer, Location, and Final Girl from a single feature film. This way, I can actually show you how it actually synergizes together, how the killer works within the uh, particular setting that he was made for, how certain final girls are supposed to work with either the setting or the killer in order to either give them an advantage or to just kind of work a little bit better and make it more thematic or something along that ways. But once I'm done with those five, I can go back in and start mixing and matching final girls and killers and locations, creating all types of crazy uh, custom locations, custom stories, and more fun, frantic, and general horror for our final girls. With that said, why don't we go ahead and grab our cotton candy, butter our popcorn, and get as many people into that clown car as possible as we head to the circus, possibly one of the scariest places for me because I don't like clowns, and this is right there with it. I also don't like living dolls, so special place in my heart right here for Geppetto, the location, and then hopefully we'll see if Asami will survive. So let's go. Geppetto versus Asami in the Carnival of Blood. Welcome to the most terrifying circus you'll ever go to. Unless you go to whatever that big circus tent is from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. In which case then, that's probably the most terrifying one you'll go to. But this is really close. So... We have our ringmaster over here, Geppetto. We have uh, our map, Carnival of Blood, and our final girl, Asami. So we're gonna go ahead and do all the setup for everything, and then we're gonna go right into the game. First things first, we're gonna go to Geppetto. We have all of his health over here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll put the final health here. Asami has five health, so it's one, two, three, four, and then the last one right here. Let's go ahead and set up Geppetto's. Finale and Dark Power. So we'll grab the finale cards. We got four of them right here. One of them is an epic finale. The other three are just really, really bad. Uh, they're all kind of bad in their own right. So we'll just do a shuffle. We'll use this one. Pop that right here. These can go back to the box. And we'll take the Dark Finales. Again, we'll do the shuffle, shuffle, the shuffle, shuffle. Uh, there is a dark, uh, an epic finale, or an epic Dark Power in here as well, along with all of his standard stuff. Again, all of them are really bad, so uh, it doesn't. It's not going to really matter what we draw. We're, we're we're screwed either way if any one of these, or I say when these get revealed. And then we have down here our final health tokens. So we spin these around in all different ways. Uh, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do five, and then we'll do. Four. So we're going to go to the top row here. I'm going to roll this dice. If I roll a six, I go to the second row. I roll the four. So we'll take this one. We'll give this to Geppetto. I'll move. Uh, uh, I'm rolling a five twice. You know what? If I roll a five twice, I'm just going to take this one. We'll say this one is Sami. So there we go. Let the fates decide whatever it is that... Uh, her health is going to be, and as I destroy things, that's great. These all go back to the box. Awesome. Now we're going to set up the item deck. For the Carnival of Blood, it's a very unique thing. Basically, what the Carnival of Blood has is it has three trap cards that you will find within the item deck. Hidden Cobras, Steel Bear, 
and knockout gas. Each one of these does something really terrible, and as soon as it's revealed, it activates. These three cards are going to be shuffled into the item deck like so. So I'm going to take the item deck here. Oh, in addition to that, because we have Asami, I am going to be shuffling in Asami's knife belt. As you can see right here, there is a very similar item to this inside of the item deck, but it's a limited use. Asami's uh, knife belt is unlimited use, so that's what makes it better than the other one. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to take this, and we're going to do a shuffle. Uh, there's still going to be uh, four cards per deck. Let me just do this really quickly. Hold on one moment. Yeah, I had to look it up really quickly. There's still going to be 12 cards total within all of the item decks. So what I'm going to do is these three count towards that total. So now I have nine that's going to go out. I have Sami's knife belt here. So after a little bit more shuffling, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then hers is going to go in here for nine. So all these will go back. And then I'll take these and I'll shuffle these around. And then out of what I have here, I'm going to remove three of them just to make sure that whatever is facing up on an item deck is not a trap. So after I do the shuffle, I'm going to go one, two, three, move these aside, and then we're going to go like this. One. Actually, no, we're not even going to do that. <laughs> Let me do this. One, two. And then if I take these and kind of mix them up like so, all around, all around, we do one, two, three, and then I shuffle these up so we don't know where the item uh, trap falls, and they go here. So that one will go there for the Forest of Horrors. We'll do the House of Mirrors right here, and things to astonish. Oh, man, those crazy sideshow type uh, wacky, uh, you know, uh, bearded lady, living mermaid, uh, things along that ways. So now I'm just shuffling these three, and we're going to do one at a time. So in the Force of Horrors, we have the Knife Bandolier. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is the one that's exactly like Asami's Knife Blade, but it has uh, limited uses to it. I can only use it four times. So that's going to go here. And then on the House of Mirrors, I'll just show this up here. It's much easier if I do that. The next one is a first aid kit. So there you go. Every time you use an action card to recover health, you recover an additional health. Not great, but whatever. And then in Things to Astonish, we have an old revolver. can only be used with a weak attack, but it does add an additional damage from a range. So I have to be able... I can only use it from a range one away. Next, we'll go ahead and do the setup. So let's go ahead and just shuffle that around. Pick where everyone is going to start, and we will figure out where all of our unhealthy and unexpecting uh, victims are going to fall. Krishka, we have Ring Around the Rosie is our setup card. I don't think I've ever seen this one. I've played this like three or four times. My God, there's so many people spread out. We got one here. We got one here. We got one in the House of Mirrors. We got one in the Forest of Horrors. Two right in the center here. Well, it's bottom center, really. One there. Three in the big top. Move you guys a little bit more close. Put one over here. And then one, two right over here. Our final girl, Asami, is going to start at Things to Astonish. So I'm actually starting on an area, but I don't have any type of search card, so that doesn't really matter. And Geppetto is going to be starting right here, which is both a good thing and a bad thing by the way that his puppets actually function, and I'll talk about that when I get a little bit further into it. Now let's just do the terror deck now, just because it's right there in the way. I have fully shuffled this together. Uh, we have the cards from Geppetto and the cards from the Carnival of Blood. So that's all together here. Sure, why not? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's our timer. And lastly, let's take our event cards, shuffle them up a little bit more, and see what the first one is going to be. Here we go. So we'll just, I'll just cut it one more time just for the heck of it. Because there's going to be a lot of things being cut here, including all the victims. hey -ya! It's not real! Uh-oh. Uh, these special effects are crazy. That actually looks like a corpse. Oh, man. Place four new victims at the House of Mirrors. 
place the skull token at the Forest of Horrors. Any victim at or moving into the Forest of Horrors are immediately killed. Oh, are you kidding? Am I starting with deaths already? Hold on a second. All right, so House of Mirrors gets four new victims, two, three, four. I know that I have that special thing in order to like say there's a ton of people in one spot, but I'll, I'll worry about that later. Uh, Forest of Horrors over here does have one person in it, so the skull's gonna go here. You're gonna immediately like <laughs> die. I don't know what happened to you, but you just went kablaa. And so we'll remove you, put you right here in dead, and immediately send this up one. Wow, we didn't even do anything. We got that's the crazy part about this map. You didn't even do anything, and you already have a dead person. All right, so all of this is now set up for the main uh, game. Let's go ahead over to our cards, and I'll grab those. Our tableau is all set up over here. We got all the cards ready to go. I have my zero cost cards, which will come right to my hand. And then at the end of this round, I'll be able to purchase any one of these, depending on how much time I have left. Definitely see uh, my first video of this for a better tutorial. Otherwise, keep watching and you'll see how it plays. So now the thing with Geppetto is that on Geppetto's turn, when the killer phase goes, two things happen. First, he spawns a puppet. And that's what these little guys are right here. The puppets will go down and then they will target a victim and move to them. The puppets have a move speed that's the same as Geppetto. They each have one health and they have one attack to them. That's not going to raise it all throughout the course of the game. At least it shouldn't. It might based on whatever is there. When a puppet moves into a space, it doesn't kill anything, but that doesn't mean that we won't draw a terror card that will cause the puppets to start slashing their way uh, through all of these unsuspecting meat bags in here, which is going to be really awful with the amount of people that's here. I need to get over to the House of Mirrors as fast as possible and get them to the clown car. Oh boy, yeah, I gotta, I gotta run there. The thing with Asami, as you can see right here, she only needs four victims saved in order to unlock her special power, which is awesome. She definitely will be needing that special power in order to uh, defeat Geppetto. So with the amount of victims that are on the board, we might be able to get this really quick. Geppetto's fear starts at four. As you can see on his little line right here, he doesn't have much terror increase, but he does have more events that flip out. So you got to watch that. And finally, I do have a Terror Trap reference card over here. This way I can kind of focus on this if uh, a trap is revealed uh, from the, uh, what is it, the Terror deck, and I'm not sure what it does, this will tell me what it does. And with that said, let's go ahead and do what we got to do. So we get two dice, so I'll take these two dice here. Those are our starting two dice. Normally I like to focus first, and I think I may end up doing that because the faster I can move this up, the easier it's going to be because you're going to have more dice in order to roll. And there's really not much uh, in terms of Carnival Blood and Geppetto that lower the terror gauge. So, or raise it, I should say. We need to lower it. I got two stars right off the bat. Are you kidding? Oh, uh, this may be, this, this may be a good run. Cross the fingers. All right, so we'll move this up one and we gain two time. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. So I think instead of doing another focus because I have the extra time, I'm going to go ahead and do my walk card and start to kind of move my way over to the House of Horrors. Because if I can get over there as fast as possible and start rescuing people, things will be better. That was a two card right there. That was a star and a two card. And I am going to get rid of weak attack and short rest. So we'll put those under here to enable me to move two spaces. Now I'm going to lose the one time now because there's going to be mistakes from here. Geppetto is a confusing one with the way that the puppets move around and how far they can be away from him and all things like that. So uh, there's going to be some mistakes that happen throughout this, and I apologize. I'll try to mark them uh, as you see on the screen or whatever as I see them through editing, but for right now, I know one of my biggest mistakes is forgetting to push down the time. So I did that now. That's great. We're going to move two spaces. I'll move one. Actually, I'll do... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one, and I'm going to take this dude with me to the clown cards for two, and I'm going to immediately rescue them. I could move one space to be with all the other people, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the victim here, save them right there, so this way the horror level drops by two, and I immediately can draw or roll two, um, two dice. One, two, and I'm in, I can roll three dice is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. I'm going to take this one right here. We'll put that amongst the three I have. Um, and you know what? I will walk. I will do another walk. I'll hold on to this focus for the next round just in case. 
and we'll go ahead and roll these and I got nothing. But what I am going to do is I will move one space, lose a heart and lose two time, unfortunately. So we'll move up one. So I'm standing on everybody as they all gather around me. They're all like lost in the house of mirrors. So right now I'm running around. Hey, hey everyone, where are you? Get out of there. Get, get, get. There's crazy psychos around. Uh, so I lose a health, which is fine. I can always get that back later and I lose two time. With that, I'm going to end this phase of uh, our action phase, and I'm going to move on to the planning phase. Five in order to spend over here. I am absolutely going to grab a sprint in order to get uh, people out of here. And then my terror is pretty low, so I'm pretty good with that. Um, what do I want to grab? Do I want to grab... I'm going to grab a close call, and I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab... Uh, gee, no, I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to grab this search. So that's one of each. Oh, what did I grab? Oh, I had, I had them switched up. Whatever. I have one sprint and one search. That's fine. And I have one close call. So I got those three into my hand. And then all the zero costs go here. They will come back into my hand next round. Killer phase. Geppetto is going to spawn a puppet. So the way that the puppets work is they will spawn right on the same space as Geppetto. Being that they are puppets, they are on strings. So puppets can never be any more than two spaces away from Geppetto at the end of their turn. If they need to go three spaces away in order to get somewhere, but will end three, uh, two spaces uh, away from him, then that's a valid movement. They have to end their turn two spaces away. If for some reason Geppetto, Geppetto jumps to the other side of the board, then the puppets will immediately start trying to make their way back to him uh, in the shortest route possible. So Geppetto will be their target, not uh, victims and not the final girl. But as you can see from up here, the puppets will always target victims. They will not target the final girl because Geppetto wants the final girl to be his new doll in his family. And they'll always spawn one at a time. As you can see, there's three uh, puppets all together. So we got two over here and one here. They will spawn one at a time. If you defeat a puppet, it goes to the exhausted rain. And then on the next turn, uh, once a puppet spawns, any exhausted puppets go to ready. So it kind of buys you a turn of sorts. Anywho, this little guy is going to move up here to the closest victim. So he is stalking this guy right now from the shadows. And Geppetto would attack and kill whoever's in this space with him. But no one is there. Terror card, terror card. What do we have? Oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> Where the hell did the blades come from? Place the spinning floor blade trap token in your space. Immediately apply the trap's effect. See the trap? Oh, no. Trap reference card to you and any victims in the spot. <gasps> oh, no. So here we go. Spinning floor blade trap. Roll two dice. For each result, do the following. You take one damage or a five to six. You may roll move one space. Oh, no. This is the worst. Anytime a victim enters or is in a space with a trap token, they are killed. Oh, God, whenever you do... Oh, so that means... Oh, I have five people dying immediately. Oh, God, they're just dead. They're just... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, five of them are dead. They are so dead. And I have to roll two dice in order to see what it does. Oh, no. Okay. Well, this is, this is going to be one short-lived game, that's for sure. Uh, one... Two, that goes up one. Three, this gets revealed. Uh, weapon graft. Puppets do two damage when attacking now. Oh no. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, so now a new event is even shown. All right, so we got an event over here. Uh, how dangerous can it be? Very, 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 very dangerous. Uh, during the upkeep phase, each victim moves one space towards the closest trap. What? What? That means... Oh, are you kidding me? That means these guys are going to immediately die. Oh, no. Well, I got to roll this for the uh, the spinning blade trap. So here we go. Uh, two. So I have a five. So I may move one space. So I can actually get out of there somehow. I'm going to move... I'll move over here, I guess. Uh, and I roll the two. So I take one damage and I... Uh, go down or up on the horror level. So that goes there, and this goes one. Wow, I thought this was going to be a, a easy game. Look at me. 
Look at me being dead uh, almost immediately. Oh, no. Oh, no. We don't have to worry about the panic phase because everyone's dead. No one survived the uh, space where everybody died. But now we have the upkeep phase where uh, each victim moves one space towards the closest trap token. Are you serious? So literally, it's another one, two, three, four people that have died. So once again, stupid people jump into the House of Mirrors and they see the blades. The blades come out of the ground, out of the other mirrors. They probably think they're reflections, but they're real. And they go dead, 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 dead. And that's four more victims uh, added to uh, our pile. Got a, got a nice pile of bodies over here, apparently. That's great. I can push this back up to six. Not that it matters. It's going to be a very short game. So we go one, two. So that's one event. And then it goes up discard one terra card so basically what it is is i don't think this triggers again does it this might trigger again yeah yeah it uh it triggers more uh, events so oh boy okay so i need room for a lot of events right now so i'm gonna say i think it's uh four or three events i think i did i'm doing three events i also discard terra cards so uh, first event that gets drawn is employee tra transportation. Place the golf cart token uh, in any of the four corner spaces during the upkeep. You and or two victims in the same space with the golf cart can drive it up two spaces, but the golf cart must stay on the outer path. If the gar golf cart drives it to the enemy, deal two or three damage to them. So I'll put that there, and I'm going to put the golf cart right here. Here, right now I'm gonna put it up uh, no I'm gonna put it up here put it right here for right now maybe I can get to it faster or something like that and we discard one tarot card doesn't it doesn't trigger I just have to discard it all right event number two animal panic each time the horror level increases roll a number of dice equal to the new horror level and do the following for each star you may move a victim of your choice one space for every two dice that are not stars heal a victim okay well that's fun uh, and we're gonna do one more mirrors everywhere. Oh come on! I think I got them. Oh no! If you if you attack and there are one or more victims in your space, a victim ties every time you roll a one. There's not gonna be many victims left. So you know what? A lot of these are not going to matter. Oh my god! I went through most of the event deck right there. Oh no! Anywho, I was back in the house of horrors. That's that's where that's where Asami was. Uh, I can still get her special ability with the amount of, uh, oh, I got to discard one, two more cards. So those are gone. So now my tarot deck is even lower. And uh, <laughs> Geppetto can do three damage and move three spaces. And the puppets can move three spaces. That's great. I also only have two dice. So we'll move that there. I should have gotten the distract when I had the chance. That's all right. Let's go ahead and uh, just because where we are... Now, I think it's when I move into, I don't think this triggers again. I think I have to start like a brand new turn or something like that. Uh, I mean, this is a brand new turn. I don't know. I, I'm going to say that this blades didn't trigger this time. But if I end up staying here, then it's going to trigger again. So I need to get out of the House of Mirrors uh, right now. And I'm going to do that with, uh, I'm going to do that with my sprint. I'm going to try to get out of here and run as fast as I can and try to save people. Which did not happen because I rolled a whiff. So let's spend the two time in order to do a close call. I'll put that underneath here just to show that I did it. Roll these two again. And I get to discard two cards in order to activate. Yeah, I might as well just get rid of my search and my focus. It's the only thing I can do, but I'd rather just move the two spaces and get out of there and figure it out. So let's go, um, yeah, we'll just go one, two. We're over here to this side. We lose a time. And that is unfortunately all we can do. I'm sorry, I need to move a bunch of victims. So you're over here, you guys would over here, you would go here, and you would all go here. Because they're all moving to the freaking House of Mirrors. And I would have went one, and I would have taken this guy over here to these three for two. Not that it matters, they're going to move back at the upkeep phase anyway. You're going to die. Oh no. Alright, so we got over here, we got three to spend. I get all of my zero costs back. Uh, three is going to be a distraction, so I can at least get that focus down. Sorry, terror gauge down is what I meant. And then we'll put sprint, uh, close call, focus, and search right in there. Another puppet spawns, and it's going to move to the closest victim. So we'll have it move. Yeah, it has to move up. Uh, and then you will move over here. 
So you're, you're right that you're two spaces away from um, Geppetto, so you can't go any further. You're right where you are. Geppetto's just <laughs> laughing his top hat off, and uh, that's, that's it for that. Next terror card. Dear Lord, I hear that. <laughs> Those are friends. Roll a die for each victim with a puppet, uh, for each victim with or adjacent to a puppet. So it's all three of these and you. Uh, one to five, move the victim towards the puppet. Uh, six, move one victim. Oh, God. Oh, man. So here's the thing. We have this right here, which is targeting victims, moving, and attacking. Um, because it doesn't specify anybody, everybody attacks uh, in order, and I believe, yeah, the minions will activate this first, and Gen and then Geppetto will do it. So first things first, this dude right here is gonna kill this guy. So uh, that little puppet's gonna go on in and just slaughter this particular uh, guy for two damage. So you're gone. <sighs> that means this bounces up and down. So we remove a terror card and we draw an event. Right, so I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna take the terror card from the top here and just kind of throw it underneath. Well, at least he doesn't get that dark power. That's fun, because that's discarded. But we do get another event right here, and it happens to be, oh gosh, a special character. Did you follow me here? Why do you always keep tag? Why do you always tag along? Place four new victims in the big top. They're all gonna die. Uh, one of them is a special victim who is your plucky younger sibling. While the sibling is in your space, you can spend two time to reroll one die if the sibling dies. Plus to terror oh no i'm just doing this right now because this is absolutely intriguing this is going to be probably the highest body count of any one of these i will ever do so these four will go here they're going to die because of uh how dangerous can it be and uh yeah then all the event cars are going to be out and it's just going to be a thing so now we got to continue this now so now the puppets will go and they will again target uh, but they can only go here. They can only go two spaces away from Geppetto. So they will not move any further. Even if they go down to like these areas here, spacing away from Geppetto includes uh, just whatever's connected. And the House of Mirrors is on its own. So they would not go to any one of these other spaces because that would put them too far away. However, Geppetto can move one, two, and go right to the center of the big top right there and he will kill somebody. I'm going to say he's going to kill this victim right here. So he will see him, Whoa. maniacally laugh, and then probably like stab him or string them up with a string, cutting off the circulation. Or Who knows? There's, there's an entire booklet that Van Ryder Games made about very gruesome kills based on killer and location. So yeah, you're, you're, you're gone, my friend. And put you right here. Bounce that up. Terror card gets discarded. Great, and guess what we do? We draw another event. Isn't that amazing? Oh boy, what do we got? Full moon, the victim furthest from you is the world's hairiest man and is actually a werewolf. The werewolf will not follow you and cannot be targeted, saved, or killed. During upkeep, panic the werewolf. Uh, when he does, then he does two damage to one target in the space according to the following order. Victim, you, minion, killer. Okay, so. The victim, a uh, person further from us is a uh, werewolf. I'm running out of space. I'm gonna move all of these down here because I'm gonna be drawing another event soon. So that means one of these guys is uh, is the werewolf. So we'll just put him here, so that's fine. I'm still not done with this card yet, by the way. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. And then he'll just do his thing during the upkeep. All right, so now I get to roll one die for each victim that is with or adjacent to a, uh, a puppet. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six victims right there. I am just going to roll all six dice at once to make it easy. If I roll a six, I can move the victim. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to do it one at a time. I'm going to start with these three right here. So I'm going to roll three dice. And for every six, I get the move uh, away from a victim. Oops, come back here. And then for every one through five, it moves towards a puppet. So we roll this way. All right, so I got a one, a three, and a six. Uh, I am going to move the sibling. I'm going to move the sibling down one, and then these two go up. So let's get rid of these. It's a lot to pay attention to. Oh my god, this is this is insane. This is crazy. I'm going to lose, but man, am I having a crazy time with this. 
one, two, three, five. Okay, so all three literally move right up into here with the puppets. And then everyone does their moves again. So each puppet will kill one character, and then Geppetto would kill somebody in his space, but he isn't targeting anybody because there's no one there. So just like in Chucky or Puppet Master or whatever you want to do, the little guys go up and they start gnawing and stabbing and stabby, stabby, stab, and two guys go dead. So these go here in our pile of bodies. Uh, two terror cards are going to go into the discard pile. So we are one card away from the finale. And that's two event cards that get revealed. The first one being, run, I'll hold them off, another special victim. Victim closest to you is your fiancé. If an enemy would move into your space while the fiancé is there, instead kill the, the fiancé and the enemy stays where they are. The fiancé is killed by a trap. Increase the horror by five. Okay. So I think that would be you. You're one of the closest ones to me. So you are the fiancé. That's, that's terrible. Oh, no. I need to... Oh, uh, God. I don't know what, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another event card because that's apparently what we're doing. We're going to put it right here. Gah, clowns everywhere. Now we're in my form of scariness. Uh, did you just hear a honk? During the upkeep phase, victims in the big top and any adjacent space panic. If they panic into a space with an enemy, they are immediately killed. Oh, are you serious? Oh, man. Well, after all of that insanity, uh, this is done. And now I would say we are going to be panicking these three people right here because in these spots, people were dead. And so this is the panic phase. If a victim was killed in this turn, uh, panic all victims. Well, it says all victims in the killer space. Uh, does that matter for the minions? You know what? I'm not even going to look it up. It, I'm going to say it doesn't for this particular run. They're just too in shock by the little creepy things running around and killing people, so they're not going to run. However, it doesn't matter because everything else is going to trigger anyway. So we're going to do it in order that it happens. So the full moon hits first. I am going to panic the werewolf. So we'll take this and we'll roll, and he will go to three. The werewolf runs up here, and he is in the same spot with Geppetto. So he is going to attack Geppetto for two damage. Really? Wow, I actually did some damage on him? That's really cool. Oh, wow. All right, so victims <laughs> in the big top or adjacent to it, panic. So here's the big top. So it's pretty much everybody. Everybody is going to panic. Um, so we'll start with the big top, which happens to be the werewolf. So he's going to run to five. He actually stays exactly where he is. Now, he only does da damage during his upkeep phase. Okay, so, uh, no, I'm sorry, he moves back down here. He does, but he doesn't do the damage because it only works. He only does the damage based off of this. So, that did that. Um, would he panic again? Um, I don't know. I don't know if he would panic again because he moved down here. Because um, now we're going to do adjacent spots. Let's do, let's do these three first. And again, I'm just going to run by my own ruling right here just because this is already mass chaos and anarchy. Everybody panics only once per turn. So we'll go one, two, three. Anybody over, AJ, whatever, as Dan Ryder gave, if you want to let me know, or any of the fans of this can let me know how many times a victim can panic in a particular turn, let me know. Uh, I'm going to just say, again, say once per turn. So we got two ones and a two. Uh, the two... Uh, two... <laughs> oh, God! So one person is going to die. So I'm going to send uh, my sibling and one person over here, and then one person's going to panic into the House of Mirrors, where the blade trap rips them to shreds. There we go. And we go here, and this good the bounce to bounce. The last terror card is gone, which the finale is going to reveal, uh, but also the last event card is going to reveal, which is so much junk. When this card is revealed, find the Zappo item card and put it in your backpack. Reset the item decks if necessary. If you lose Zappo, roll one fewer dice when searching. All right, let me see if I can find Zappo. Zappo happened to be uh, not with the other items, so he was, wasn't in the game originally, but Zappo is the carnival monkey. Such a cute monkey, always ready to lend a helping hand. Aw. You may use Zappo to resolve a search card from up to two spaces away. 
Uh, if you use Zappo and an item trap is revealed, he flees in terror, ignore the effect of the trap, and discard Zappo. So he's a good way of kind of blocking traps. However, as you can see, if I lose Zappo, that's pretty much the end of that. Uh, before I reveal the finale, I'm going to go ahead and roll two dice and just move these two because of the clowns everywhere. Um, and then things just, just panicking, just panicking, panicking, panicking. We got a two and a four. Um, oh, there's three people here. Hold on a second. Uh, da -da -da. I got two fours and a two. So I'm going to take, uh, I will take, uh, I'll take my two special victims and move them to the clown cars, and we'll run up here. And because he is in the space with an enemy, Mr. Petto here, uh, he becomes the latest victim to add to the pile of growing death and destruction that is the Carnival of Blood. All right, there, curb bounce. Nothing else happens because I have no more event cards and no more terror cards. However, I am gonna flip the finale. Okay. When revealed, spawn all remaining puppets to the board. When moving puppets, they move one space less than normal. Okay, so he's going to spawn here. And now all puppets will only move two spaces instead of three. Oh boy, this is great. That was probably possibly one of the longest rounds I've ever done for this game. I think I'm only on round three now, going into round three, and I have every event actually shown. I only have a certain amount of guys here, and I am in a lot, a lot of trouble. I am in so much trouble. Yet I did, two damage was done to Geppetto because of the werewolf. Isn't that a thing? I only have two walks. I have two distractions. I have no search cards, so it doesn't really matter. I have two dice to work with. Let's go over here. Move over, move over, move over. Um, I'm going to do distraction first to at least maybe possibly get two stars. Can I, do I, do I have that bad of luck completely? Am I just going to screw it up? Yeah, look at that. All right. I'm actually going to get rid of my short rest and my walk here. Going to put that under, only going to do two, make one of them a star. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up. Uh, it was at six. I'm at seven and I'll move that down one. Man, I really wish I had that revolver right now. Focus, 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 focus. Come on, focus. Give me something good. Oh, man. All right. Well, I can make it uh, a success with discarding these two. I'm in so much trouble. All right. So let's just get rid of them. Make that a success. Then I'll move this up one, but then this down one as well. So I have six to spend, and we'll see what happens. All right, so we're back here. We didn't see this much, so we got focus. Um, I'm going to take two, four, and then a sprint card for six. Distraction goes back, and then the rest of these are all zeros, and I'm going to be dead, very much dead. All right, so we'll move one puppet, uh, one, two. That's two spaces, so he will move over here to a victim, and... That guy will kill, Whoa! that one will just kill a basic victim, so that one's dead. Move that from the board, put that in a pile, and then we'll just move that over here, and this guy will come slinking in over here as well. They have surrounded my fiance, and as much as he tries to fight back, he <laughs> is just, just taken out. He is beaten and all that other disgusting, awful, awful stuff. Goodbye, you. You're the lone special victim right now in the pile of yellow bodies. And then you will move to me, and you will attack me for... Uh, you're going to attack me for one. You are going to do... You're going to do two damage to me, which would put me at the final health. So I'm actually going to take this two damage, just for the heck of it, because now I'll be able to gain another health because I am at like this adrenaline rush right here. So anything else that happens, I can go ahead and uh, roll three dice, which is going to be great because now Geppetto is coming into my space and he's going to attack me. Whoops, get up here twice. So I have two guards. Each guard, I'm going to need two. Oh no, he's going to attack me twice for two damage a piece. So I need at least one star. Uh, per guard in order to survive this. So first one, oh no, I have to survive. I have to survive. I got to toss these two to make this a star. 
So that reduces damage by two, so he does nothing. He attacks me again. I'm gonna so die. I'm so dead. Oh good, I reduced it by two. Hooray! Good for me, yay! Ugh, so with that said and done, I now have no cards in my hand, by the way. And <laughs> that's the end of the killer phase. Uh, our werewolf friend here panics, so let's go ahead and do this. A three, which sends him up to, to the stupid, stupid spinning blades. And he gets the, the shave and a haircut a little bit too close uh, for comfort. And our hairy friend is, uh, is shaved down to skin and bones. You're off the board. And I don't even know. I don't, I'm not even going to bother moving any of this. I don't even care. And you know what? It doesn't really matter at this point anyway. I know I missed the uh, how dangerous can it be. I should have moved everyone closer to the saw blade first. So whatever. You're in there. Our sibling, for some weird reason, decides that they wanted to go in here and see what, what happened to Big Scary Wolfman. She, he or she, whatever the sibling is, went in there, went to plunk and just adds themselves to the pile. I forgot to do the planning phase. Uh, basically, I have no action because I have no cards, but at least I can buy something. I have six to spend. I'll spend four for a retaliate, not that it's really going to matter. Um, so it's four, and I'll just spend the two close calls I, for no reason, and I get all of my zeros back. I have no defensive capabilities. I cannot run anywhere, and I have one little focus. That's This, this is going to do nothing for me. I'm not even going to bother rolling because at this point, yeah, I, there's no way I can win. There's zero way I can win because puppets are now going to start swarming me like so. And one of them is going to attack. I could retaliate. I could attempt to retaliate in order to do two damage. And then that would kill uh, two puppets. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's see. Let's see what I can do. I can roll and I can possibly get two stars. I did. Hey, look at that. I got two stars. That's cool. So I blocked all damage from that one puppet, and I did two damage. So when attacking minions in the space, you choose which ones you want, but you can't choose uh, the, the... Basically, when you attack minion, you attack all minions. So any damage that I do past the initial one will go into this and continue around. So I'm going to say, this guy tried to attack me. I ignore all damage, and I chose to do da two damage to these two, so they would go to the exhausted spot. And then that just leaves me and Geppetto, which doesn't really matter because I have nothing to block his two attack. And with that, Geppetto has made me one of his family. But wait! Wait before any of that happens. And the things look a little bit different now because I really thought that I was done and I started to do a cleanup while things were happening, uh, while my videos were downloading. And I forgot, I forgot about our Final, final heart. Could this save Asami? Could this actually keep her alive and keep Geppetto from his grimy hands and sticky strings from wrapping around her? Let's find out. If this is hearts, we're still in the game. If this is not, then it's game over. So here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, it's three hearts. It's three hearts! We're still alive! Okay. okay. Okay, so what that's going to do is this comes off the board now and it gets replaced by this white uh, heart. has the same picture on both sides, so that is literally the last life uh, Asami is going to have. And then two hearts here. Unfortunately, Geppetto does still have his second attack because he gets two attacks on me. He does two damage, which does two hearts, and I am still alive. I am still alive. How I am still alive, I am not too sure, but I am still alive. And now we are in the final phase is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to give myself my fourth dice. So here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a weak attack. I'm going to do a weak attack. Oh, man, I need to get two stars on this, 100%. I got a lot of stuff in order to be able to do it. So I need to do a weak attack. I'm going to do one damage, and I have to fight the puppet first because it's in the same space as Geppetto. I need to kill the puppet in order to be able to buy the two guards to survive uh, Geppetto's uh, attack. We're just going to do it over here. Oh, no, that was a one. That was a one. That was very, very bad right there. So I need... 
to spend a close call and I'll spend two time and roll all four again. I need, I need two, I need two attack. I need two stars. There we go. Okay. I got three stars. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, two stars, which does one damage, which kills him. And then that means that I am good to go to hopefully fight uh, Geppetto. So what I'm going to do beforehand is I have four time right now. That's enough in order to be able to buy um, the two guards at two apiece. But I'm going to take uh, these four cards, I'm going to toss them, and I'm going to gain myself four more time. Doing that gives me eight to spend. So now I can buy these two guards for four. I can take this focus back. And then I'm going to take this Furious Strike and add that to my hand. And in the round, these go back, Retaliate goes back, and the other Close Call goes back. Come on, get back in there. Oh boy, this is, this is going to be tight. This is going to be tight. All right, Killer's Phase. Geppetto goes, he attacks me twice. He gets two attacks on me, but they're both two damage. So all I need is one star from four dice to block an attack. I got it, that's good. So that's the first attack blocked. And now we have another guard for the other attack to block that one. We got it, we got one star. That's all that matters. All I needed was one star. So I blocked both of Geppetto's attacks for the killer phase. Move it on to the action phase. This is back to six. I'm gonna do Furious Strike. So I need to do two damage uh, I need to do two stars to do two damage and then lower that one as well. So, here we go. Come on. Come on. I could do two damage to him. I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. Um, I got this. Do I toss? You know what? Let's just toss them. Whatever. So, that's two, that's two right there. So, now my Furious Strike did two damage to Geppetto. So, we can move that. And this lowered by one. I didn't spend any time but that's okay. Unfortunately, at this point, it's not going to matter. I can spend uh, four of my six to get the retaliate. All of these come back to my hand. And then with two left, what? Search, and get a search because I have Zappo. That's really not gonna do much. Furious Strike goes back, the guards go back, Focus and Close Call go back. Ah, this wouldn't have been so bad if Geppetto didn't have two attacks. If he was only doing one attack, it would be fine. And I don't have anything to cancel a horror or a, a, a killer phase. So he's going to attack me, and I'm going to retaliate. And we're going to see what happens. Maybe I can do two more damage to him. Here we go. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that stinks. One, two, three, four. All of it done that way. Yeah. Yeah, and that does two damage to Geppetto. Unfortunately, at this point, I do have to call in an end because Geppetto does get one more attack on me, and he does two damage, which is enough to officially say, you are dead. You were so close. You were so close to surviving. And I really did almost forget about that extra health token at the end of the game, which is like a big component to Final Girl because in all of these horror movies, you know, you send the killer down, you hit him for that last time, he falls to the ground. There's that chance that he may get right back up and attack you once again. And that is the purpose of that final heart. Is your final girl really down for the count? Or does she have that last like burst of adrenaline and fight in her to get up and fight the killer? Or is the killer really dead and gone? Or is he going to sit up and kill you when your back is turned? That is the point of that heart. I almost forgot it. And even though it still turned out to the fact that Asami died anyway... It still was something that I wanted to do, I wanted to show off, and I wanted to just make sure I got that on camera. But man, come on. Come on, guys. That body count was insane. I flipped every single event. I Everybody just kept walking into that stupid buzzsaw trap because that was the first terror card I drew. Everyone just went right to it, and it just slaughtered everybody. And then the puppets came in, and they're like... <laughs> this is one of those examples where... 
all the worst things happened at the worst time. And I'm kind of glad that I showed you guys that because that's part of the game. That's how it is. It's not all, you know, easy peasy, you know, whatever, you know, roll the dice. Oh, no problem. I got this. I can figure it out. Easy. Done. Stuff like that happens where, for one, I lost a victim before anything even happened. And then, of course, on the first terror card, I lost, what was that, six victims in addition to that? And then everyone just kept going into it and being like, oh, cool, the House of Mirrors, there's saw blades here. That can't be nothing dead. It's, it was insane, it was awesome, and I'm very glad that I was able to bring that to you guys. Last thing I do want to point out is Asami's special ability. If I had managed to save all four victims, Whenever you draw at least one item card, draw an extra card and choose one, which means a one-star success would actually equal a two-star success based on her ability. You are immune to item trap cards. So her immunity is specifically made for Carnival of Blood. And that's kind of one thing I wanted to show off beforehand and why I wanted to use her because that's the synergy that I was talking about in the intro to this where she is made for Carnival of Blood. She'll work well on any map. She really will. But that one particular ability of her to avoid item traps, great for this map. If all your other victims don't jump into a spinning saw blade beforehand. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this session of Final Girl. It was definitely a very interesting one indeed. Uh, I was going in this very confident. I beat uh, this scenario twice with Asami so far, but... What happened here was beyond anything I could have ever predicted, and that is why I love these games, because you don't know what each game is going to be. Each one's a brand new experience, and now you just go on to the next one and think to yourself, well, it can't be worse than that, but it can. Hope you guys have a good one. Let me know what you think of this down below. Let me know what you think of Final Girl as a whole and what have you played? Have you had this type of experience where you've just had a ton of bodies in your game and you just can't do anything? Or did you manage to survive that regardless of anything, even though you're the last one standing out of the 20 or so people that happened to bite the dust? So thank you guys again. You are amazing. I can't, I really can't thank you enough. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Home Gamer Dad so you don't miss any more Final Girl, which is going to be a lot more coming to this channel. So this way you don't miss any Power Rangers, so you don't miss any playthroughs, so you don't miss any how to play, so you don't miss any of my digital dives, so you don't miss any of that stuff that I am here doing for you, my family, my, my great, great, great family. Thank you all so much. Take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever, gaming together, and I will see you in the next film. Later, guys.